These storms, although minute, affect brain waves and hormonal levels, causing a number of different reactions, predominantly in men. While a few women may also experience changes during these storms, they generally seem less affected by the sun's behavior. We, too, have magnetic fields which surround each of us. I think it is not unrealistic to conjecture what is happening externally is also happening internally. And the author writes, I believe current science will acknowledge this notion, showing the sun's charged particles and its influence on Earth's magnetic field is uh, the core of rapid change taking place on the planet. In like, this same uh, effect occurs with human magnetic fields, ushering in a change or transition. Perhaps this is what our Mayan elders are trying to tell us. Reacting to changing hormonal levels, some men may become increasingly irritable and aggressive, while others may instead become more creative. I also think it uh, amps up the sex drive just a little bit. If you look at fertility rates, they are also in line with solar maximum. An increase in solar activity is found to increase psychotic episodes in individuals who already suffer from unstable psychological states. While we may relate such behavior To a full moon, in 1963, Dr. Robert Becker and his colleague, Dr. Friedman, demonstrated that solar changes can also lead to noticeable increases in psychotic activity. Now, Bill, let's bring up some of those graphics showing the sunspot cycles. There's a whole bunch of pictures that we're going to show you at this point in time to get you to understand the data, hopefully, you will be able to also yourself see the patterns. When we see lots of energy, solar activity, we also see certain wars taking place on the planet. The Revolutionary War, the Civil War, the Vietnam War, and also the late 60s and all the creativity going on. Solar maximum. The first time that the United States went into the Gulf, where it only took a couple days, 1991, solar maximum. Take a look at the graphics on the screen, and you can see what was taking place in the uh, late 1990s. 9-11 and the war on terror, so-called war on terror, this current war that is not ending anytime soon. In fact, it's actually going to expand, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the broadcast. We'll talk about China. But you also see massive solar activity taking place in 2001, 2002, and 2003. In 2003, there was a power outage in New York City and Canada, and uh, that was caused by a Class X solar flare, CME. We will now continue with this report, yet these reactions are not simply isolated to a few particularly sensitive or unlucky individuals. Evidence indicates that wars and international conflicts most often break out when sunspots are rapidly forming or rapidly decaying, as these are times when there are more intense geomagnetic storms. There's also another report that I encourage all of you to Google and research uh, this particular study that looks at deeper states of dreaming, lucid dreaming, being tied to geomagnetic storms, the magnetic field fluctuations actually having an impact on the fluid in our brain. In addition, this increase in solar activity also correlates to periods of more accidents and illness, as well as an increase of crimes and murders. The entire biosphere is affected by this electromagnetic pollution, and human behavior seems to react accordingly. Now, this is some of the early data, the early research that was done on uh, the possibility of sunspots, solar activity being linked to human behavior. As early as 1915, some scientists were beginning to recognize connections between solar activity and human behavior. This work began with Russian scientist Alexander Chavitsky, I've never been good with Russian last names, who observed that mass changes in human behavior correlated to sunspot cycles. In the 1930s, Professor Raymond Wheeler, a historian at the University of Kansas, took this observation one step further. His research afforded numerical rankings to the severity of individual battles correlating to solar cycles. His data was statistically analyzed by Edward Dewey, who validated the existence of these war cycles, yet he was unable to make a definite connection with sunspot cycles because the data at that time was insufficient. In the 80s, With a more detailed analysis of Wheeler's data, the connection became clear. Upon close examination of the data, a pattern begins to emerge wherein wars are most likely to start in key points of the sunspot cycle. This 
is when the geomagnetic activity is changing most rapidly on the upsurge of solar activity or the downward part of the cycle when sunspots are rapidly diminishing. In addition, we can also see how this affects psychological uh, mechanisms such as altered brain rhythms and abnormal hormonal levels. In other words, wars are kind of a mass psychosis. War fever is real. With this in mind, should we view warring behavior as a type of disease? Are the related socio, political, or economic factors as much of a symptom of solar cycles as the battles they appear to create? And if the data on this sunspot and the sunspot cycles points to an impending crisis, how can we best use this knowledge? When we see the connection to physical uh, mechanisms, electromagnetic pollution, this gives us some predictive insight for when increased aggressions are likely to start. Calculations indicate that we're due to see another rise in solar activity, intense solar activity, in about two years, September 22nd, 2010. This was written two years ago. So the sun has been going through a extended solar minimum for some time. Now we're seeing more activity. Scientists are baffled. Fluctuations in the magnetic field. Magnetic north moving in the direction of Russia away from Canada. And strange changes to the thermosphere. And these are just names that are being given to what man is trying to understand. It's no mystery that scientists are baffled. I would be baffled to see a scientist try to explain to me the nature of reality in the universe because it's all based on theory, the current available data that exists at this particular point in time. Remember, there was a point in time where it was believed that the Earth was flat. Now with science, now with satellites, uh, like the uh, particular uh, satellites that NASA is using, not that we can trust everything that's coming out of NASA. They were founded allegedly by Nazis, rocket propulsion scientists that worked for Hitler. The question is, how do we verify, double, triple, quadruple, verify the facts and data outside of NASA? Enter the European Space Agency. So all across the planet, we're seeing similar pieces of data outside of NASA being released to the public. Report goes on, as with any disease, if we are aware of the cause, we can take precautions to lessen the symptoms. In past writings on the subject, I have suggested that global meditation might be one tactic for steering this aggressive cycle another way. More information is available at burl.com. B-U-R, or B, yeah, B-U-R-Y-L.com. Imagine how valuable it would be to mankind or even a individual if we were able to address a potentially volatile situation by carefully studying the pattern of history. How would this influence our decisions and actions, and how might this change our fate? Now, some of that stuff seems a little negative. Oh, agitation, male aggression, war. There's also consciousness, spikes in new ideas, new understandings, a different energy on the planet. We are affected by the charged particles. You, some of you, are affected this week from the changes going on on our planet. Some of you have written me your dreams. Some of them are very, very apocalyptic, more apocalyptic dreams. It's so strange how I'm in so many people's dreams. Um, but you don't have to look at this in a negative way. This is empowering information. It's also a great time to meditate, to do martial arts, to do Tai Chi, to work on that energy between your hands, deep breathing when we go through cycles of change just like this. So we're going to continue on here tonight, and we're going to get into some other reports. I'm just going to give you a, a caveat for what we're going to talk about tonight. Chinese missile may shift the balance of power in the Pacific. Massive war games are going on right now, folks, that just happens to correlate with the sunspot cycle between China and the United States. And I've said for years, I believe it is the agenda of the New World Order, the global New World Order, not just simply the Anglo-Saxon New World Order, to stage another conflict, beginning with an attack on Iran, which will then spread throughout the planet. I choose to believe that these things aren't happening to us. They're happening for us to evolve as souls. It's my own personal opinion that where our soul goes from this point on is determined by our actions and how we relate to these changes. Remember, free will is the most powerful thing that we have in our possession. Bill, let's go ahead and roll that clip with Mary Vaughn. I meet with some people every week at Mojo's Coffee Shop, 28th and Southeast Stark, 
1 p.m. Saturdays. You can also email me, alex underscore answery, at hotmail.com 